Hello YouTube, Wycliffe Barrett here, x -Plane Dedicated. Today we're going to have a look at the Rotate MD-80 and I'm going to do a cold and dark start with you and program programming the FMC. I've seen quite a number of tutorials for the MD-80 and I'm afraid the ones that I've seen are just silent. Um, maybe they might have a bit of text on there but others just seem to be silent and you can't follow the mouse or anything which really I find quite annoying. If you're going to do a tutorial then at least speak in my view. Anyway, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the whole uh, kind of cold and dark startup cockpit preparation and uh, I'm going to leave the mouse cursor on so you can actually see where the cursor is going. We're inside the cockpit here of the MD-80. This by the way is the same process in XP-10 and XP-11. I'm just in XP-Plane 11 but it's exactly the same in X-Plane 10. So just going through the cockpit and here we have the overhead uh, and that's the main panel view as you can see with the enunciated panel up above. There's the cursor so you can see what's going on and uh, first things first is we need to start the APU and get that up and running so battery on then uh, we need to put the smart the start pumps on and then the APU switch start okay so I pulled that down now and you should hear the uh, APU winding up and you'll see the EGT coming up and the pressure coming up when it gets to around about 90 to 100 percent then um, the APU light will come on which is a bright blue or bright pale blue and then we need to turn on the left and right APU buses so we're just waiting for that pressure to come up to around about 90 to 100 percent and when it does so we can then move into the next part of the process <clears throat> it does take a little while and you can probably hear it to winding up there in the background. Just keep quiet a moment. Just waiting for that blue light which should be any second now. There we go. So now we turn on the left and right APU buses. Left. Right. Now it's time to turn on the instrument lights which are down here. So we turn those. Just click and drag to the right. Then it's the cockpit flood light, which is over on the right. So, but then also the left and right engine generator switches need to be going on. Um, they were already on, so I just checked. Now, uh, meter select, check the meter readings with the switch, and then put it back to the left. Uh, down to the APU panel now turn on the air and then arm the emergency lights and no smoking and then we need to look at the meter select and heat select switch which is in the middle there put the pito install heats on and put it into the captain position then move across and do the windshield anti-ice okay so now it's overhead console lights Which is here, which there you are. And the cockpit floodlights are on as well. Then the max speed Over warning speed. test and stall warning test, which Over I've speed. done. Then down to the air con panel and put on the supply switches and adjust the cabin temperature. Now we're going to go to the crossfeed valves and this is in a really strange place, they're on the aft pedestal. So we need to go down here, the white levers here, pull these up. Those are the crossfeed valves. And then we need to set cabin pressure and landing altitude. We can keep it at 2000 feet, uh, it should be okay. And then the final thing here on the overhead is we need to push the Annunciation Digital Lights Test button, which is in the bottom right hand side. There we are. You see all the lights come on. I'll just scroll down so you can see the other lights on. Let go and they go off. Okay, to the glare shield. So remove the master caution there and then we go to the glare shield. This is how we set up the glare shield. So the first things first is flight director on 
and then clicked EPR Lim button, which is there. Now we need to set the uh, speed, so set that to 250. And it takes quite a while and a bit, quite a bit of winding, unfortunately. They, they seem to have gotten that a little bit uh, wrong. Maybe they need to speed that up somehow, but uh, I'm using the mouse wheel to get that to around to 250. Once you've done that, you need to pull the knob down, so you just click and pull it down. Okay. Then the runway heading select. So you need to do that there. So turn to the runway heading. Uh, we're at Cardiff, so we're using runway 30. And then pull that knob out. And then select the altitude. So it's 6,000 feet on departure at Cardiff from runway 30. And then pull that knob out as well. So you can set the VHF at nav radios as desired. And then you set your position strobe and turn on the left and right uh, PFD and ND light in there. I've turned it down and turned it back up again so you could see that. Uh, you set the barrow pressure as per usual or the uh, QNH. Just there. Uh, Cardiff is 1013, 220 feet uh, altitude. Then test loop A and loop B. Now I have not been able to get these to work. They just don't come on. There should be a, a, an alarm and ringing quite loud. Next, you need to go to the thrust rating panel and select TO. And you'll see that in the enunciation panel there. And then the hydraulic pump switches need to be turned on. These are in an unusual place. They're down here in the, in the co-pilot side. So you need to turn the hydraulic pump switches on. Okay. There we go. So, that's all that done. Right, programming the FMC. Now, what I'm going to do, if you don't know how to program an FMC by now, then um, there are loads of tutorials around. And programming the FMC in the MD-80 is just like uh, any other FMC, like a Boeing FMC. Uh, there's no problems at all. So whilst this is going through, I'm going to keep quiet. We're going to have a little bit of music. Uh, it's a straightforward uh, flight plan. We're going from... Uh, Cardiff to Manchester. I'll be back in a little while.
there you have uh, we've almost finished the programming of the FMC just checking a couple of things here now and uh, we then need to get on to what is euphemistically called the flight management computer now I don't know why they call it the flight computer uh, but if you've flown an MD-11 then you might understand what we're going on about and just turning on TCAS and the range and everything but we'll go to the flight management computer right now which is all this wonderful stuff down here which is all to do with the throttles and everything but you need your CG figure the CG figure there is 22 so here we are now and what you need to do when looking at this is not panic about it too much we need to come to this far left rotator there and turn that to 22 okay 22 and then set flaps to 15 whoops there we go 15 and then you need to turn this here your flap to 15 and that gives you a long trim number now you pull the trim handle down until it reaches 4 and there you are and that is all set up that is your flap a flight management computer it's a really weird little device but it works engine start then so moving on to engine start we need to check the parking brakes are on there are uh, anti-collision lights will turn on there we go yeah uh, fuel tank fuel tank pumps on the overhead we now need to turn on uh, they're already on from my previous flight but just checking them again turning them on and then uh, the ignition switch on the overhead we need to turn it to system A okay system A we're using system A to start the aircraft make sure the aircon supply switches are off it does they, they appear on but you need to make sure they're off okay and then you turn start switch on the right engine so you have to uncage it, oh, I've done the left one so you uncage it and then you turn on the start switch and you'll see the N2 coming up and it's a very slow rotation to N2 you just about see it there and then once it gets to around about 20, 22% on N2 you lift the fuel levers and, and squirt the fuel into the engine so to speak so we're just waiting for it to come up to 22 which shouldn't take very much longer and we'll lift the lever and you should hear you should hear the engines roaring up there we go it's all coming up to speed now you can see that everything's moving EGT temperatures the lot so it's the same process for the right hand engine okay uh, you saw the switch over there from on the buses so uncase the right hand right hand right hand engine ignition switch and then click the ignition switch and once again you'll see N2 rising there on the bottom right hand side okay so once it rises to 22 percent around about 22 percent uh, 20 to 22 I would say you can then lift the fuel lever okay so we're just waiting for that to come up we can just about see it there and as it gets up towards 2022 I will lift up the fuel lever and uh, that will be the engine number two started there we go and you probably can hear that engine coming up to speed right now and that is it all we have to do now is clean up the overhead a little bit so to close the start valves um, close the uh, switches yeah turn off the APU and the aircraft will be ready to go and that is it so I, I hope you found this tutorial useful, a lot more useful than some of the others that I've seen and I do apologize to those uh, guys on, who've done that but uh, like I say personally I really like to be able to hear what's going on rather than just looking at a mouse dancing all over the screen. The MD-80 is a lovely aircraft, it's a bit of a handful to fly, uh, certainly landing it is a treat as well. The ILS works perfectly, everything works perfectly. It follows the climb, it follows the descent. And I think the uh, rotate have done an excellent job with this uh, version 1.3 for X Plane 11. As I said, this tutorial works in X Plane 10 as well, so please don't panic about that. It will work in X Plane 10 the same as X Plane 11. So, 
Hope you enjoyed it. If there's anything you'd like me to do in particular on the YouTube channel, if there's something you want to see, hopefully I'll be able to do that for you and uh, get that done. And you just let me know. As always, my name is Wycliffe Barrett. This is X Plane Dedicated. Uh, if you like the video, please hit the like button, give me a thumbs up, and make sure you subscribe. And uh, we'll see you all soon. So take care and cheerio. Yeah.